Welcome back on this Move It Monday. You know, training is more important than ever for runners amid the pandemic. Yeah, but with temperatures warming up, it can certainly be challenging to get outside and at times even a health hazard to hit the pavement on a regular basis. So joining us live this morning with some ideas to keep up your training through the summer heat is Dan Floyd, the Chief Operating Officer with Hood to Coast Relay. Hey, Dan, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Good to be with you. I know it's it's still feeling pretty nice outside this week, but uh, we're in July now, so we know that those summer temperatures are right around the corner. So why can it be so dangerous uh, to be training outside when it really does get hot? It's funny you say that. I just went and burr right now. I'm in the house. And so <laughs> it is a little colder, but uh, that, that's, that's one reason why we do need to plan for this and uh, because our bodies are not acclimated to the heat and they're, they're not ready for that. Uh, so, uh, number one, uh, it will get warmer, and one thing we can do is really just avoid the heat. So, if you can get outside earlier in the morning, avoid the temperatures and direct sunlight, same thing with the evening. Obviously, you're off to a great start, and uh, I'm not your meteorologist, but the, the next 10 days, the weather does look great. Uh, so, getting out in the morning and with the extended daylight hours and the evenings, it, it'll be great. It'll be awesome. Yeah, I mean, what what are some of the the dangers? I know I've done Emily and I have both done Hood to Coast. I've yeah. done that leg one a couple times where the second part of it is through like the industrial area yeah, where you take off from the hot. Yeah, that was my leg last Ugh. year. Mm -hmm. Well, and it was so hot one year I did it that I remember I got like the chills afterwards um, when I stopped. That's and so not good. <laughs> no, it wasn't good. <laughs> so I mean, what what are some of the dangers that can come with running in the heat? That's a perfect example, leg one, uh, and thank you for running. Uh, we will miss you this year, but we'll be back next year. We will too. Uh, but you're, you're right, that, that leg one's a perfect example because generally you're starting earlier in the morning where temperatures are, um, are nice. conducive for running and walking, it feels great. But you're right, once you get to the leg 13, the second leg of that series, you are on the concrete, it's hot, and it's, it's, um, it's important that you plan. So as we know, the weather's gonna be beautiful this summer and, and getting out, like I said, in the evenings and the mornings is not easy for everybody. So you need to plan accordingly, plan, plan a route that can be in a, a shaded area, a, a wooded area where you can avoid the, the blacktop. Um, but prior to that run and, and uh, run or walk and afterwards, hydration, electrolytes are key, uh, wearing clothing that is, that is a little bit loose fitting, lighter clothing. Uh, that allows the, the body to breathe is, is very important. Uh, but to your question, uh, heat stroke, uh, nausea, uh, well, heat strokes are the, really the worst, but um, you need to know the signs. Nausea, uh, a lack of sweat, um, you need to be aware of those and ask for support, stop, slow your pace, uh, especially early on during the summer when we're not used to this, slowing the pace, walking, being very careful is, is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I, I felt like a, an egg frying on the sidewalk when we were out, <laughs> out doing the run last yeah. year in the middle of the day. Uh, so if you are on a run and it's getting pretty hot and, you, and you're feeling like you might get overheated, uh, what's kind of the quickest way to cool down? Should we be running with some water or what should we do? Well, there's a lot of people will tell you to run in circles, not, not literally around your around your house uh, but but have a uh, plan your route accordingly in an area where you can where you can access water and fluids where you can carry it on you mm -hmm. um, don't, so, don't do that, like that said, thing because then you get stuck right <laughs> yeah, far away. yeah exactly so 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 plan the route where you have access to water electrolytes uh where you can even uh take your phone with you um but if if you're overheating like i said uh if you're not sweating if you're feeling nauseous you need to slow down you need to stop and you need to get out that phone. You need to ask for help. Uh, it's it's not worth it. It's not worth getting sick um, or having lasting health effects. So um, just slow down. Have fun. Um, it's um, it's a difficult time right now for everybody. So get outside and move, but do it in a way that's healthy and safe for you and others. Yeah. Well, and speaking of it being a, a difficult time, what is your advice when it comes to wearing masks and, and exercising and training? I I feel like most people when they're outdoors and they're kind of by themselves, um, you know, it's generally it's considered okay, right, to not wear a mask. Yeah, it's such a good question. I, I, was, I was hoping that you'd bring that up because we've been we've been sending our information to our database. When you can wear a mask, you should. And that, that's just the bottom line. But uh, also running, walking, uh, high intensity, especially it, it may be difficult for breathing. And in that case, just be very careful and be courteous to other runners and walkers and cyclists on the road. And proper social distancing, I think, is is something that we can easily accomplish. Uh, 
uh, when we're out moving. Uh, six feet should be pretty simple because we can see runners and walkers as we approach uh, the group uh, and we can make adjustments. So, so go far beyond six feet, be courteous to others and uh, plan your route. So, yeah. so if you can't access the route, well, try to access a route that allows you flexibility to move, you know, laterally around oncoming runners and walkers. Hey, Dan, I know real quick, we're almost out of time. Uh, I'm very much like a carrot and stick kind of person. I, I need to train for something. So it's hard to have all these races canceled. Mm -hmm. Where can people go to learn more about some of the stuff that Hood to Coast is doing since the relay isn't happening in the traditional sense this year? Yeah, thanks for asking. Go to hoodtocoast.com and we do have virtual events and we have we will have a virtual relay in August to not replace to the coast but to keep people engaged and get people out and moving it's not the same we admit that but having that accountability and having the social media interaction with other people getting out and doing um getting, getting out and moving uh, will help give you that carrot and keep you engaged so <laughs> we will see you at timberline next year there All you right. go okay thanks mm -hmm. dan we appreciate it and we'll we'll link to the page too on coin.com if you want to check out more on